match. I got all my blue clothes one side. I went to one brother's house, he sent me for, I went to a program, so I stayed at his house, and then he told me to use his master bedroom. Wallahi, I cried. And I went in there, and I, I thought it was a shoe shop. I thought it was a shoe shop. He, he, I, I guess he meant good to give me his best bedroom. And he didn't want to expose me, or he didn't think much of it. But I made a draw in my heart, and I do this whenever I go. I say, Allah, wherever I go, people host me with the best of kindness and I have nothing. But they respect the appearance of knowledge. Allah, my prayer is, not give them more money, give them deen, Allah. Give them iman, Allah. Bring their children to you, Allah. I'm not here to make God for their wealth and that. They show me this respect on the appearance of deen. I don't have it, but it's a, it's a shame that you have hosted me and acknowledged me and respected and revered me. Those who had it are elsewhere and they have moved on. The Arabic poet said, قَدْ ذَهَبَ النَّاسُ وَمَاتَ الْكَمَالُ وَصَاحَ صَرْفُ الدَّهْرِ أَيْنَ الرِّجَالُ هَذَا أَبِي الْعَبَّاسِ فِي نَعْشِهِ قُومُ فَانْظُرُوا كَيْفَ تَسِيرُ الْجِبَالُ When Abu al-Abbas was a great person passed away, someone said, قَدْ ذَهَبَ النَّاسُ The prominent people have gone. وَمَاتَ الْكَمَالُ And perfection has moved on. Even the time called out, where are the humans? Where are the humans? The reply came, you are in the coffins and you are in the grave. Stand up and see how giants and mountains are relocated to cemeteries. So anyway, she came home, she asked her husband, do you think any? He said, of course, I know of a man by the name of Ubaid ibn Umayy, he will never fall prey to your beauty. He said, give me the chance, I will mislead him. I will end on this, inshallah. He said, go, you have my permission. He leaves. She leaves. He had a discourse in the Haram Sharif. She comes in the Haram. She says, Sheikh, can I have a moment with you, please? I need to ask you something. So that's fine. Goes to the corner there. فَأَسْفَرَتْ عَنْ وَجْهِهَا She unveils herself. Absolute beauty. Absolute beauty. So he drops his gaze. He says, Sister, please, please. Istatiri, can you kindly conceal yourself? She says, إِنِّي قَدْ فُتِنْتُ بِكْ I'm infatuated over you. I said, okay. Okay. I want to have a moment with you. Sheikh said, okay, no problem. Three questions, you answer it. And then I will, I will look into your request. She said, oh, no problem, my darling. He would say, I was about to tell her no, but when she said, darling, I melted you. Ya Allah, I, you know, I, I just felt that she was so polite. My brother, remember my words. You either walking out from this gathering with a drug, or a gambling habit, or a woman, or your Allah. You can't walk with both. You cannot walk with both. You either having a thrill of pure happiness. You either having an excitement or wholesome bliss. You either excited for the moment and happy for the rest of your life. Thrilled for the occasion and overwhelmed for the rest of your life. Decide what you want. This is to call apply your mind. You tell your son, these are the perks and the luxuries you enjoy. I need performance from you in academics and Islamic studies. It cannot be that you don't perform and you enjoy the perks. If you don't perform, you toil, you labor, you earn, you provide for yourself. But if you show me results, all is done. All is taken care of. And without stress. We tell our children, all we want is do your thing and I'll take care of the rest of it. Long story short, she says, answer three questions. She says, okay, no problem. Number one. لو جاء ملك الموت ليقبض روحك أكان يسرك أني قضيتها لك Sister, let's forward time. Let's speed it up. Let's fast forward it and bring it to the moment of death. And near the angel of death, knock in your door. And here you have your records. Would you like your records to carry the demerit and the sin of zina that I had done with you here and now is the moment of death? Just, just fast forward things. She said, Allahumma Allah, no, no, never, never, never. Allah forbid. Allah forbid. Allah forbid. This morning, we were there in the hotel. And mashallah, the brother suggested that we just have a little massage. And I got chatting with the brother and I started speaking. And wallah, as I was lying on the bed and my hands were there, and he put my hands on the side, I thought to myself, that will also happen when my body will be lying one day. My corpse will be lying. Today I'm consciously being told, put your hands on the side, lie flat, look down, leave it like this, breathe in, breathe out. But the day is sure to come, my Allah. The day is sure to come that my hands will be on my side. 
Some will be crying, some will be shocked, some will be disturbed, some will be consoling, others will... They say the graveyard is a silent place with a loud message. The graveyard is a silent place with a loud message. Would you like it that I have committed this? No, not at all. Second question. لو أدخلت قبرك وأجلست للمجلس مسألة You are lowered into your grave. The angels appear. Reckoning commences. Would you like to know that you have committed this act? Allahumma la, never, never. Third question. Ji abik. You appear before Allah and your scales are brought. Would you like that on your evil scales this is carried? She said no. I said listen now sister. Ittaqillah. Fear Allah. You're a good woman coming from a noble house. Allah has favored you with everything. Don't throw your na'mats away. Don't abandon what Allah has given you. Preserve your relation. Fear Allah and change your life. She comes back. The husband says, what happened? Did you fall pray? She says, anta battal wa nahnu battalun. My husband, you're wasting your life and I'm wasting my life. فَأَقْبَلَتْ عَلَى الصَّلَاةِ وَالصَّوْمِ وَالْعِبَادَةِ And then she devoted her entire life to worship and piety and virtue. And the husband used to even say, now, what happened to Ubaid ibn Umayr? My wife used to be a, a bride for me every night. She's now become a monk. I just told her that, you know what, he won't fall prey. But now suddenly she's not making hello to me also. She's changed the whole focus of her life. These are my last two words to you. And I say to you, because you have studied the fiqh of al-Shafi'i, rahimahullah, I pray for him so much that you possibly know not, because I am one of the most fond people of his poetry and his advisors. He said, Sahib to Sufiya. I stayed with many pious. And I had the company of learning and drawing from the knowledge of great giants. And I can summarize all my knowledge and my information and my wisdom that I've acquired from all the pious in two words. Oof. Just the thought alone gives you a shiver and makes your hair stand. A man like Ash-Shafi'i, who left a legacy, who left a school of thought, who authored 200 books, who was one of the poetic people of his time, he said, I sat with them all, I learned from them all. I summarized my stay with all the scholars to two words. Number one, Al-Waqtu Saifun. Al-Waqtu Saifun. In qata'atahu aw qata'at. Time is a sword. Either you cut it or it chops you. Time is a sword. Time is a sword. It's going, my brother. It is going. It's happening. It's moving. Yes, the year has turned. And we see the, the presence of a new Ramadan. Yes, I'm over the 50 mark. And for some, I'm over the 40 mark. And for some, I'm, am I a grandfather? Am I a father? Has this happened? Has this boy shot up? Yes, it has happened. The first thing I learned, time is a sword. Either you cut it or it chops you. And number two, وَنَفْسُكْ إِنْ شَغَلْتَهَا بِالْحَقِّ أَوْ شَغَلَتْكَ بِالْبَاطِلِ Either you engage it in Allah's obedience, or then it engages you in Allah's disobedience. Either you say, I'm reading Quran, or then your ego says, I'm going on the net. Either you say, I glorify Allah, or then your ego says, I'm popping the pill. But there is no in-between. Either you engage in it, or it is engaging you. That is the harsh reality. Someone said it very beautifully on the note of time. The past is history. The past is history. The future is a mystery. The present is a gift. That's why they call it a present. Why do they say it's present tense? Why? Because it's a present. It's a present. Nature has given you a present. You are walking out here, my brother. We say as you leave out, there will be a gift bag. Make sure to collect your gift bag. There will be a complimentary voucher. There will be a CD. Walk out with your gift bag. And it's a gift given to you by Allah. And what do the world call it? They call it the present tense. Why do they call it the present? Because it's a present. As they say, aspire to inspire before you expire.